talked about It's knowing looks It's sung in songs And read in books It's everywhere My next guest in the program today is a household name. He was a cast member of Young Talent Time for eight years, which was to catapult him into a career in showbiz. From Australia to the West End, Philip Gould continues to woo audiences right around the world. And now he's back with great composers of London's West End. That's his current project, and he's bringing it down to us at the Cadinia Cultural Centre in uh, just over 10 days' time. And Philip's on the line now. Philip, welcome in. How are you? Hi, Lee. How are you? I'm well. Nice to have you with us today, pal. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me. Great mate of mine is John Bowles, and of course you work with John a a lot, I suppose, on Young Talent Time days? Uh, Well, funnily enough, John and I crossed paths briefly, but um, he was more in the the following uh, lot of kids that came in after I'd left. Because you were Um, in in the originals, weren't you? Yeah, Yeah. one of the uh, first six, because there were only six in to begin with. Mm. Um, then they took it up to eight, um, but he still wasn't in there when I th- think he came in um, just at the end of my uh, reign in there um, uh, with uh, Tina. That's right. Course, that's right. You know, Tina Arena. So you know, he was with her partner. Yeah, there was a, a, a wo- and- there was a wonderful training ground, young talent. I wasn't it. Oh, fantastic! Mm. I mean, there's just nothing you can get these days that really. Um, compares with it no. not at all no. and um you know and it was a shame that they uh didn't quite make it when they brought the um the new production back of young talent time it just just fell by the wayside which was a shame it's i don't know what it was it could have been just the formatting however whatever it was mm. it was a shame it didn't make it but uh, the original certainly was something that nothing could be compared to. Well, we used to look for it. was Saturday night, 6.30, wasn't it? Uh, yep, that's like, the yeah, one. Yeah. And I know, against football. That's that's <laughs> right. And look, not all of us are into football, believe me. And no. uh, we wanted something <laughs> quite different. And uh, this is where you guys just shone and you, you, you took off. It was just wonderful. And, and as I said before, a great starting ground for so many of you. You know, almost all of you have gone to do other great things. And mm. it's just, just been wonderful. Uh, when you finished up with Young Talent Time, you would have been, what, 16 at that stage, wouldn't you? Uh, 19. 19, were you? Yeah, oh, well, because I... Because you had ideas, when I was yeah. 14. Oh, okay. I, I was 14. Mm. And um, then uh, I went on to, um, uh, what was it, a stage production of More Canterbury Tales. Ah, okay. Uh, and that was the thing that um, sort of catapulted me into going back into theatre again. Because when I was... But before Young Talent Time, I did uh, a lot of um, TV and... Um, theatre. So, you know, I did things like Mame and Oliver and, um, you know, programs like that, uh, shows like that. Yeah. And then, of course, um, I was also uh, a special guest on Mike Preston's In Melbourne Tonight as a shine boy when I was quite young. There you are. And um, working with Graham Kennedy, Don Lane, uh, Jimmy Hannon, um, all these people, uh, Ugly Dave Gray, um, and going on and doing songs on those shows even before Young Talent Time. But um, so I was, um, uh, you know, You're pretty f- much a seasoned performer. Oh, I was going to say, on a, there, but a junior star before you arrived at Channel 10. Well, the, the thing is, though, I mean, they're just like bits and pieces that yeah. you do here and there. And it was Young Talent Time, really, that gave me a solid grounding yes. of everything. It tied everything together, Lee. Yes. I, I've been learning all those years, many younger years. Uh, and, of course, you know, um, you can think you're learning stuff, you know, when you're doing this job and that job. But it's not until you do something like Young Talent Time where it's a regular thing. You have to be there. You have to be on the on the ball every week. You have to know your songs. You have to know the routines. You have to be in the recording studio. You have to do this. You have to do that. And it was a real discipline. And, you know, not only did we do that show, we, in the holidays, we'd go off and do touring and do concerts here and there. You know, um, they, we didn't, they didn't work us into the ground or anything. But uh, the thing is, we had this experience. And it's just something you cannot buy. 
Yeah, it doesn't matter where you go. And we said earlier, you can't get that today, and that's the sad thing. You mentioned there mm. Don Lane, uh, you mentioned Graham Kennedy and so on. You know, these days, and I say this a lot in this program to, to various people I speak to, we don't have variety. Stubbs was on here a couple of weeks ago, and he said, oh, I'm going to put my hand up to a variety show at night. <laughs> and, and, and we need these people, don't we? You know, Stubbs, yeah. he could do oh, it again. He, he could do absolutely. it. Absolutely. That'd uh, be brilliant. Yeah, we've got our stars um, on Channel 10. They could do it. There's a lot of people around. If only the yeah. networks would stop these blasted, stupid cooking shows. Uh, and reality and shows. And reality, that, yeah. Called, you know, oh, I'm what, sick of people getting lost in the jungle. Google box, Google oh. box or whatever oh. it is. Just I mean, that, uh, I, I just shudder when I... <laughs> See the ads. <laughs> well, Philip, they, they, they say it's the money and it costs a lot to put cool. live variety up, and I understand that. But if you're sending people mm. across to Africa and, and doing a, a jungle stint over there, goodness, that must mm. cost dough too. So please, we need live variety back on television. Eddie yeah, Maguire's Eddie name was won. raised two weeks ago. Yes, exactly. One night yeah. a week. Get people a, a chance to get on TV and let us see them. And then yep. there are your stars of tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Well, Absolutely. see, now they've taken it more into these competitions with, you know, the uh, all these um, singing competitions. Mm. Um, so you, you know, you've got all those shows, uh, but uh, you know, the poor kids that get on there and win these talent quests, they haven't a clue about what's expected of them no. until they suddenly get thrown into doing all these concerts and thrown into the publicity and thrown into this and that. And half the time they just break down and can't do any more, or you know it takes them a few years to get back into it. Um, and it's, uh, I think it's a very unfair way of making a star. Philip, you had a, a wonderful season in the West End. Um, you had uh, a stint on Crazy for You, and that what went two years and nine months from memory, didn't it? Um, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> it was something like that. Um, it, was, it was a record, uh, I think you broke a record for an Aussie uh, oh, performing. Oh, that was 42nd Street. Oh, 42nd um, Street, was it? 42nd Street, and that was in London, of all places. Right. Uh, when I was living and working in London. And, um, yes, I held, held the record for the uh, longest, um, Australian longest-running uh, role on the West End. So, um, yeah, which is quite nice. That's something to be proud um, of. I'd, well, I hadn't even thought about it until someone brought it up to me. In fact, I think it was uh, Simon Gallagher. Uh, Gallagher, um, he, he said uh, that um, it had yeah, been uh, set up as uh, me having done all, all this stuff uh, that time over in uh, London. Now, you, you mentioned there. Simon's name there. What's he up to? I don't know, actually. I, well, I, I know he's uh, on the board at um, uh, the Queensland Performing Arts, and uh, you know he has his finger in many pies. And uh, I think he's he loves you know music and theatre and and that so much that he wants to be at the back of it and and driving force. I think he still does concerts around mm. the place, um, and he's still a great performer, great singer. My God. I, I remember that uh, grand that. piano. He's a glass grand piano. as a choir, I think, from memory. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful piano. Yeah. Now, you're coming down to the Godinia Cultural Centre, of course, getting back to what yep. you're going to be doing with a great show, too, with some wonderful composers, great composers of London's West End. Yeah. Tell us fantastic. what we can expect. Well, there's all sorts of wonderful music, and we've got it dating right back, uh, you know, to Lerner and Lowe and, um, of course, Gershwin, um, and Andrew Lloyd Webber's in there, and um, you know things like me and things from me and my girl, my fair lady. Um, what else is there? Uh, Les Misérables. Um, uh, what else have we got? So oh, um, Evita, Forty uh, Second Street. Yep, good. Um, Cats. You know, there's just so many things, wonderful songs, and it's myself, um, Michelle Fitzmaurice, and Philip Wielden. And, of course, our pianist is uh, David Cameron, uh, wonderful musician. Great pianist. And, um, you know, we've got uh, some fabulous songs, and it's just a wonderful afternoon's entertainment, or morning's entertainment, I should say. Mm. Not an afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> we, we've got to get... The, look, I've got a funny story about Morning Melodies. I was going to... We go to Morning Melodies here quite a, a bit, my wife and I. So the yep. last one that was on uh, was Maria Lanza. Uh, the, oh, cool. the Christmas doing. So that mm. was uh, that was nearly four weeks ago now. It's always on a Wednesday. Yes. 
<laughs> he put this on a Tuesday. Now, I booked my oh. tickets, I pay for the tickets, did all the right things, and we're toodling down there on the Wednesday. Oh. I get down to the theatre at half past ten, I say to my wife, there's no cars here. Perhaps it's been cancelled. So, idiot me looks at my ticket, which said Tuesday. Oh, no. Yeah, so I missed it. Oh, yeah, I missed oh it. what a shame. I believe it. I haven't seen it either because they're always working when we are, so yeah. um, I never get to see it, but I believe it's absolutely magic. Well, it's so. always a Wednesday. Now, yours is Wednesday. I've got to make sure this is right. Yes. Wednesday, the 8th of March, because I've got tickets. I don't want to find that I'm going to go on the wrong day yeah. no, and walk at midnight. That. So when you said the <laughs> afternoon and not the morning, I've got to make sure to the no. listeners, it's the morning matinee. Don't do what I did. It, Three weeks ago. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, the 8th of March at 10 o'clock. That's when you have your scones and a cuppa. And yep. then the 11 o'clock performance. Now, you won't be eating scones because you'll have to keep mm. the voice nice and clear, won't you? Oh, yeah. Well, also, we have to set up all the sound and make yeah. sure it's all working and the piano's balanced with us. And, you know. and uh, how long does that take you to do that? You get to a theatre, how many hours before you do it? Um, well, it's normally about an hour and a half. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, we have to get it all right, make sure it's sounding right for the audience mm. because... You don't want them there sitting with their fingers in their ears or straining, <laughs> straining to hear yeah. what's going on. Yes. So you really need to get that balance yeah. right. And it's very difficult because, obviously, with an empty auditorium, it's very, very different yes. once you get the bodies in there because they soak up the sound. Of course. Um, and suddenly all this sound disappears. So you have to allow for that on top of, you know. So uh, it's, it's quite a delicate operation. So an hour and a half beforehand, so if you see the yep. uh, the crew down there at half past nine, you can say, hi guys, I won't disturb you, go and do your work and I'll give you a scone at 12. Mate, yeah. it's going to be a great uh, a great morning, some lovely music coming out there, and uh, yeah. you and uh, Michelle, as you say, and Philip with you as well, and yeah. uh, that great pianist, uh, you know, you've got a great crew there, and Chris does such a fantastic job putting these on for us too. Yeah, he does, mm. and you know, it's great for people in our business to have something like this, to be able to entertain people, and you know, the audience, they love it because, you know, the, otherwise they wouldn't get to see half the shows that come in. So, no, that's you know. right. And it's inexpensive. At $20, it's next to nothing, yeah. isn't it? And you can oh, afford that. Absolutely. If people are on yeah. a pension or something, they can afford to put $20 away once a month and go and really enjoy yep. themselves and have a lovely time out. Philip, what's coming up next for you, mate? Um, well, I believe there's some, a couple of shows uh, next year. There's a, a, a Frank Sinatra one coming up, um, which would be quite good. It's not... Um, not impressions or anything like that. It's really a tribute to. Right. Uh, that'll be coming up, um, but uh, that's all in the wind, you know. Mm -hmm. That's all, all next year. <laughs> well, it, it'll go fast. This last 2016 oh, went fast, didn't it? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, this show is spreading out the whole year for me. So, um, you know, it's quite a, quite a long stint. So um, I have to get fit. And you travel the state <laughs> or the whole country? Do you... Uh... Well, it's all over the place, Is yeah, it? New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria. It doesn't go on to the western side, unfortunately, mm. but um, sometimes we get over there, but uh, not this time. You talk about keeping fit. What do you do to keep fit? Um, well, these days um, I, I do a lot of walking and uh, um, training, uh, just keeping myself fit while I'm singing yeah. um, and eating well, and, you know, it's it's quite a, ba a you know, balanced way of uh, eating and uh, and fitness. I do the odd um, fitness regime, you know, a bit of exercise here and there. Um, can't do too much these days. I'm not as young as I was. <laughs> to be careful. Don't want to pull any muscles. <laughs> no, exactly right. Exactly right. Mate, we'll oh, catch... I will be doing some dancing in the show. So oh, well, you're doing that'll... 42nd Street. You've got a little bit of dancing yeah, there, don't you? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you do the tap? Yeah. Still tap? Yeah bit of that. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, well, look yeah, forward to that so very, very much. Philip, look forward <laughs> to seeing you on the 8th, mate. You take care, pal. Thanks, Lee. Okay, bye-bye to Bye. you. Philip Gould, what a lovely chap. And a great performer. Please go along and see it. Great composers of London's West End. Uh, it's the morning mat uh, matinees. It's at the Caninia Cultural Centre. 10am for a performance at 11.10 is the morning tea. $20. Go and see it, please.